What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Doing another Pete Dye course here, second one of the day. For today's video, we are playing John's Island Club. This is the north course in Indian River Shores, Florida. This was designed and completed by Pete Dye um, in collaboration with his... I think he had a couple kids, but a couple of them. PB Dye was one of his sons, and the other one, this was in 1973 with his other son Perry Dye. Um, so we're going to give it a go. Usually Pete Dye, obviously, notorious golf course designer known for some long and challenging courses. This had tournament tee boxes in the uh, the slope. When I was the rating, the course rating was uh, almost 74. So playing, if it's a par, I didn't check what it is, but it's a par 72, obviously meaning playing about two strokes tougher than par. So obviously you'd expect that from a tournament 18, but we're going to see how it goes. Like I said, second round today. Um, went from a chilly fall day to just a straight up cold day now the sun's starting to go down but um i mentioned it last in the last video the fatigue's probably going to start creeping in it seems like with these cold weather rounds i go from taking longer to warm up maybe nine holes instead of four or five to warm up and then that stretch of warmed up decent swings gets minimized because then the fatigue starts creeping in even quicker so probably going to be some more errant shots some more uh fatigue swings going on here for the second round of the day but we're gonna see struck the ball I was pretty happy how I played score wise and striking the ball the first round so hopefully we can continue that over but Garmin approach our 10 behind me on a DIY level stand country club lead mat um, DIY stance mat Callaway super fast balls 10 by 7 nets that we're hitting into and Garmin golf app running home tee hero as a simulator software so first hole par 4 three eight three Slight dog leg right, gonna aim 260 it has me out there. Hit a couple close to 280 before. Let's see if we can creep up speed a couple times. Decent start, gonna overcook a little bit left, but I would think that would be about 270. We'll see if it catches the fairway or if it goes into the rough. That may limit some of the distance, yeah. 258. Decent, though. Maybe already. That one felt maybe... I feel like I hit it decent. Maybe speed's already dropping down. Granted, I did take like five minutes just to reset things in between rounds, so it may take me another couple holes to somewhat warm up again, I guess, but... Mention it in the first video using the mics that I got for on course back here now because I switched out and upgraded the battery and the camera that I used to record used to have to have it plugged in while I was recording so I had to use a different mic with a uh, charging port connected to it but now this one doesn't have it but the battery should be better so um, different mic more sensitive it picks up noise louder and there's different settings like I explained in the last one so I'll have to see there's uh, basically volume 1 through 3 that I can do it on, and then there's noise reduction level. So I'm trying to find a sweet spot between the volume level and the noise reduction and where it's placed. It seemed like when I used it on course the first couple times, especially when I was talking loud to someone like further away, my voice was like peaking and getting distorted. So i um, got to remember to talk a little bit quieter, hopefully not too quiet to where you can't hear me, but having the mic facing up and kind of further away with a uh, combination of settings, hopefully we uh, dial things in here. but. Second shot, 143 down one, but we're in the rough. So 142 plus another 14 puts us up to 152, 156. Um, same thing as the last round. I'm just going to club up. I'm going to go 8 iron. Just take a better, more controlled, smooth swing at it versus trying to muscle up a 9. A little bit heavy, struck it decent though, a little bit toey. Should be pretty straight, start right and come back left. Yep, just a little bit short. Far though. Onwards we go. Second hole par 4. 379. I'm gonna go up this right. 
been trying the best that I can to start things right and play as much to a consistent high draw. I'm still challenged or still struggling a little bit of launching it higher. It seems like my miss lately has been low on the face, but ideally my ideal shot shape is a big high draw for a driver all the way through until about probably a nine, eight, nine iron. Obviously you want to hit your wedges like even nine maybe, nine pitching wedge and your wedges, you want to hit them straight with not a whole lot of curve left and right, but all the other clubs in my bag, ideally I would like to hit, obviously just as straight as possible, but straight's really tough to do and almost near impossible, so you got to kind of put a little bit of curve and have an idea of where you're trying to start it and have it finish, so high draws are ideal for me. That's a low line drive up the right. That was very low on the face. Not exactly a high draw, but it was straight enough to get us in the fairway. It is crazy about how many shots I've hit back here. Just in general, playing back here and also the five or six years, however long I've been kind of consistently playing, out of the thousands and thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of shots, you try to do one thing, like I was saying, high draw, and your body just says no. And no matter how hard you try to do a certain thing, sometimes you just can't do it. 132, I'm gonna go pitch and wedge. My point is, I guess you would think. Other things in life, you put enough time and effort into it, you improve and you kind of get to where your expectations meet reality and you kind of do what you're trying to do, but golf is one of those things, it's just tough, no matter how much you try to do one thing or the other, sometimes if your mind and your muscle connection isn't there, it just doesn't work out that way. But that's why it makes it so fun and addicting. Alright. Toey left the club face open. Hopefully that catches the right side of the green. Did. Took a little bit of distance off it, but we got it there. Still halfway decent struck pitching wedge, I guess. I mean we're on the green, so. That was pretty toey though. Gonna stand a little bit closer to the ball. Third hole par four. Four two five. Aim up this right again, see if I can actually hit a high draw. Well, it was higher, but I don't know if it's going to come back a whole lot. It's kind of just up the right side. It's probably going to stay out there. Well, it's coming back a little bit. Not the quickest in the world, but a little bit better strike. 270. Forgiveness. It is noticeable. I've said it before since I've had this driver. I know I kind of go back and forth of how I'm hitting it and how I'm feeling about it with the shafts and everything else, but... I do see the technology, I think it's more more so you see marketing, there's not a whole lot of difference year to year from drivers, but this driver in particular, especially compared to my Sim 2, which is also pretty new, it does seem like off-center hits, you do get more distance out of it, so if any of you are in the market for a driver, I wouldn't spend, well I guess if you wait a little bit more, next year's model will come out, but um, I mean club prices are crazy, but if you're using a 10, 20 year old driver and you want something new, um, I would say it is a pretty accurate marketing campaign they have with the, the Stealth 2. This is the Stealth 2 Plus, but same thing. 155 left. Um, let's try the 9. It's maybe a little ambitious. Probably more towards the front side. I don't know if I'm going to get 155 out of it, but I'm striking the 8 a little bit better. And I think if I hit the 8 good, it's going to be possibly 10 15 yards too much. So, let's see if we can get. Maybe 145, 150 out of the nine. Potentially 155 if I hit it good, but. Let's 
struck a decent toey again, but should be pretty much at it. And just maybe need to go a little bit. Yep, not too bad. Still trying to figure out if those toe toe strikes are obviously it's just the swing in general, but if it's more my alignment, my setup, maybe my swing path, having the club face too open as I'm coming through, not releasing it enough, but. I mean, that one I caught a toe and it still came back and it drew. So maybe I just got to get used to that. Maybe hitting a little more toe side. I don't really know. I'd rather hit a toe and have it come back left versus hitting it off the heel and having it fade right. But even through three, fourth hole, par five, 533. I guess we'll leave it there. Well, that was very high toe. That's not going to be great. Looks like it's coming back though, but that was a weird, weird sound on that one. That was partially off the, the crown. Didn't leave a mark. We got 265 out of it. Again, the high launch, low spin, but that was pretty high and pretty toey. All right, 271 left. Just gonna go four hybrid. Hopefully, get. Usually play this to 245. Probably not on the cards right now, but 241 right there. We get some rollout, but hopefully hit it 230 plus, and then have some type of wedge into this. That's the plan. Had heavy, kind of a pop up to the right. Oh, I think we hit those trees. Well, we got a little bit more than a wedge left. <laughs> one nineteen, down one, but we're in the rough. So, oh, so one eighteen plus we'll call it twelve. Need one thirty. I'm gonna go pitch and wedge. I guess it's kind of a wedge, but I was expecting more of, along the lines of pitching wedge approach or uh, approach wedge 56 or 60. No, oh, that's gotta get down. That was really thin, and it's headed a little bit left. Hopefully that lands soft. Wow. Well, that's generous. Again, the feedback on these are um, more substantial, more noticeable. So that definitely was thin. Maybe it just feels thinner than it really is compared to some of my other shots with those other Sim 2s. But that was definitely on the thin side. Somehow we got that right next to the pin. But brings us to one under on the round. Fifth hole, par three, 150 up one. Um, I guess we'll go nine. This is a little bit of a hairy situation because we need, obviously, the water right up to it. We got to carry it almost all the way there. But again, I would usually opt for maybe on course just for the sake of not losing a ball in the water. I may have, I may go eight just to get it over and blast it possibly 10, 15, 20 yards long. But with something like this, we'll see if we can get the nine there. I would think on a halfway struck ball I can get at least 140, 145 out of it. So that should put us hopefully at least over the water. Not terrible. That should be more than enough to get it over. Tell you what. I was peppering some of these holes too on the first round. This could be one of those days. I'm just striking it good and I'm getting some lucky breaks too. 
I'm feeling that one I thought I had a chance to maybe go in. We could see a hole in one here. I don't want to speak too soon. Still haven't had one yet out of all these rounds back here, but today could be the day. We'll see. Or maybe just like a long hole out or something, but I've been putting some pretty close. Two under now. Sixth hole, par four, four, two, nine. Days like this, I mean, it's pretty cold out, and it's not exactly enjoyable swinging a club, but when you're striking it good, there's many days I come out here and I'm kind of battling through, complaining about how I'm hitting the ball. Days like this, when you're striking it better, you just want to keep playing. Maybe I'll play a third round, but I think the daylight, I had to wait. I was short on time today. Only day probably I can come out here this week. Um, so I don't know if I'll even have time for another one after this, but... just nice on those rare days where you're striking a halfway decent and you want to just keep going. A little bit better out to the right. I don't know if it's going to come back a whole lot. Oh, it is. That was kind of a high draw. Realistically, that one, that one felt like it started right and maybe would have stayed further right in real life. Garvin had that with left side spin. I think a lot of it is just estimated based on your swing path and the launch direction, but all in all, we're in the middle of the fairway. 158 left, down one. Hmm, another in-between yardage. I mean, I guess we'll go back to the nine. This is even asking even more out of this nine right now, but if I hit it similar to what I just did in the last one, it should put us on the green. I don't know if we're putting it next to the pin this time, but... Then it has a chance. Should increase distance a little bit. It's pretty straight again though. Not quite. Again, probably a little bit ambitious, but it was struck halfway decent in 152 out of a 9 right now. That's about as good as it's gonna get distance wise. Again, these 790s and 770s, mainly 770s, are about a uh a club weaker than my Civ 2s, plus less forgiveness on top of it, so. 422. Just a little bit tough. Granted, I know I knew what I was getting into when I bought these clubs, but it seems like lately I've been, I mean, who knows with the colder weather, but it seems like I'm swinging it a little bit quicker, I'm pressing the ball a little bit better, hitting down on a little bit more. I was seeing 5 to 10 yards more distance at the end when I was using the Sim 2s, so I think I'm striking a little bit better, but despite the me striking it better, the distance is a little bit of a confusion, mind confusion, where you're striking it better, you feel like you're swinging it a little quicker, but just because of the loss of the clubs, they're not going quite as far. Kind of out to the right again. We'll see if that one comes back again like the last one. It is. Doing something halfway right. Not a bomb by any means, 258, but compared to how I've hit hidden driver the past month or two, at least it's a little more controllable. Alright, 165. Fortunately, it crept into the rough, so. 164 with the slope, plus we need another 16, 17 yards. So that puts us at 174, 180. Um, I'm going to go 7. Been seeing about 185 ish out of this 7. Occasionally get it up to 190 if I hit it good. Probably closer to 180 right now, so I can take a pretty full swing with this. Struck it decent again. Club face was a little bit open. Maybe I didn't. No one felt good, but we're 14 yards short and right. Possibly 
slight mystery. That felt similar to the other ones. I didn't think that was going to be that short and that right. Possibly a slight mystery to our detriment on that one, but maybe not. It all evens out in the end anyways. Across 18 holes. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get unlucky. Both with bounces, reeds, trees. 14 yards in the rough, so we need about 15, 16. Going 60. That's the only real complaint. Obviously, side spin, I've said it a million times, but sometimes you just feel with the lower end launch monitor, like the R10 here, compared to something like, obviously, a GC Quad and Track Manor gold standard PGA Tour level but those type of units they still have slight misreads but you can trust those 99% of the time you know exactly what you did and what it showed is uh, exactly what happened so you can adjust more versus this one like for that example that shot I felt like it was gonna be a little bit longer a little bit straighter not quite as short right and I kinda have a question mark like alright did I actually do that is that what, what the true result of that swing was or is that a slight mystery you get a little bit of a uh, kinda guessing game and you second guess your Good shots and bad shots, but all in all, the garment does a good job. Pretty thin. It'll work, though. That was like a half skull. It wasn't quite a full skull. Got it at least enough on the face. Bogey, unfortunately, but that was pretty low. 8th hole, par 3, 1 under, 212, down 1. Um, hmm. I'm going to go 4. Usually this would be 5 iron territory, but I'm going to grab the extra club. Usually I've been playing on warm days when I'm hitting it good and striking it well. About 225 out of the 4, like 215 out of the 5, so... Oh, that's heavy and right. Good thing I hit the four. That's going to be like 30 yards short. Twenty-five. All right. Let's see if we can save par. Is it just me or does that inner circle look smaller on the screen than usual? 25 yards, we're in the bunker, so we need at least another 5. So probably 30, 35. I'm gonna go 56. Oh, and I thinned it again. We may get lucky because of the bunker, but that's not a good wedge swing. Wow. <laughs> it's always the case. I hit them terrible and they go in. I hold out last round too. Well, that's one way to get a birdie. That, I mean, I've said it before. Yeah, birdie's awesome. We hold out. We, we got a good score, but that was a horrendous swing. I scold that and it went in. It's almost like I'd almost rather get punished for bad shots and get rewarded for good ones versus getting bailed out and having a hole out from a swing like that, but... said it last time, better to be lucky than good, and that was 100% luck on that swing. Back to 2-under, ninth hole par 5, 485, all in all so far, um, the last, I'm not hitting it quite as good as the first round, again from fatigue and everything else, but the layout on this one, this peat die course, seems to be a little bit easier, there's a lot more water and bigger dog legs than the last course I played. Never know what I'm getting myself into with some of these peat die courses, especially from the furthest back tees. I never know if I'm going to come out here. Obviously, I try to be as close to even par as possible, but these peat die courses, there's been multiple like PGA championship rounds and uh, different kind of events there. So if they're PGA quality courses, um, I could easily come out here and shoot even par, maybe a couple under, or I could easily shoot like 15 to 20 over, depending on what happens throughout the round. Mm -hmm. 
low up the right. Coming back a little bit though, staying the fairway. Not great. 242 with the rollout. Usually the rollout in the fairway is a little bit generous. And home to hero. That was a low line drive though. Two forty five. Alright. Don't know if we're gonna quite get it there for hybrid. All depends on strike. It's possible if we hit it decent, we catch the front side of the green. But considering it's a par five, we're only hitting two. Even if I only get two twenty, two thirty out of this, I have like a sixty degree left. Thin and right. That was exactly what happened there. No second guess in that result. That was thin, low, and right, and that's exactly how Garmin read that. And we found ourselves in another bunker, but we're only hitting three into this par five, so on the green we got a par, in a circle we got a birdie. Um, 23 yards in the bunker, it's going to be at least another 4, 5, possibly even 6, 7 yards. I've been trying lately, this one, usually I can tell by like the shadows along the outside of the bunkers, this one looks like it's kind of shallow instead of like, you see shadows around the outside, like a steeper bunker, it comes out softer and you got to put more on it, so this one should play pretty close to the 20%, which would be technically 4.6. Um, so we need just shy. Of 30. Going 56. Caught it a little bit heavy, we'll see. It's gonna have to go a little bit, yeah. You know, as soon as I hit it with that contact, that was gonna be short. Hard though. On to the back nine we go. Tenth hole, par four. Two under somehow. Aim up this right side. Well, well, that was, again, I double check it just because I don't want to put my worst nightmare in seeing another sky mark on the driver, but that was extremely high toe. Luckily, that was so bad, Garmin didn't even read it. That was going to be like 200 yards if that popped up. Luckily, we get a second shot at it. Let's see if we can not do that again. Oh, and that's just a duck hook left. Club face was completely shut when I hit that. That's also going to be like 200 yards. <laughs> 209. That was like two 200 yard shots in a row. And something like that. We got the mulligan out of it, but I did basically the same exact. Well, first one was a pop up to the right. That one was a duck hook left, but same result. <sighs> that's frustrating. 144 left, down one, plus another 14, 15 yards, so 143, 153, 157, I'm going to go nine, let's just stripe this nine, make up for that, shall we? That hurt my hands, that was so thin. It was straight, but... 
Well, that's one way to get a par. Man, that vibrated. That was so thin that vibrated through my hands. Alright, 11th hole, par 3. That uh, hole in one feeling is uh, quickly just dissipating. <laughs> I don't know if those are in the cards. I don't know if it ever was, but I hit a couple good ones in a row. Now these are some bad strikes. I was feeling optimistic for a little while, but 176. No shot to get the 8 iron there, so we're going to have to go 7. It's going to possibly be about 10 yards too long if I hit this good, but... Struck it halfway decent, but I pulled it left. That could be long left. Land soft. Alright. It is, in fact, long left, but at least it's on the green. Twelfth hole, par four. 343. Did I aim up this right? Again, luckily. Dispersion's kind of getting wider now with these fatigue swings, but luckily, again, there's not a whole lot of water and stuff that we've been getting ourselves into trouble with this course, at least yet. All right, left it a little bit out to the right. Maybe come back a little bit, but that was pretty good contact at least. That was a better swing. And it's kind of up the right, but at least it wasn't a 200-yard pop-up or duck hook. Oh, 255. All right, 90 yards left. No slope, no rough. So let's see. Approach wedge here. We can get 90 yards out of this. We can definitely get 90 yards out of it, but if I can get the distance right. Very toey, but... Ooh. Tell you what, these P770s, that consistency... Granted, smaller club face makes me focus more on the, the strike. That wasn't a great strike location, but just the dispersion left and right and the dispersion front and back a lot, lot tighter than the rocket launcher type of Sim 2 clubs. 13th hole, par 4, 3 under now. Man. A little bit low on the face, but still decent strike again. That's going to overcook a little bit left up the left side, but. Eh, or I guess. I mean, it's a, kind of a narrow landing spot, but 254. That was about the same swing as the last time. Better contact on the club face. Speed's definitely dropping, though. 170 left on the dot. Um, I'm going to try the 8. Again, maybe a little bit ambitious, probably seeing closer to 160, 165 right now, but that should be close enough to get us on the green, I think. It's going to be straight, but it was really thin. That may need to go. 
I think ball speed probably dropped off on that. Yep. A little bit of a lineman bump in my hips and shoulders. Mainly shoulders, but I guess the hips kind of follow to the right. I feel like I'm striking it better. It's definitely a lot straighter, but catching it more outside the toe and a little bit thinner. 13 yards. At least it didn't give us an automatic plus three, so we got a chance to get this inside the inner circle. Going 60. No. Oh. Over the net, and that's going to be... It'll be on the green, but it's going to be too much, I think. Yep. Struck a decent, though. Alright. Again, okay, another ball. The one that I was using for the first round, this one was a brand new one. These other two, a couple of the dimples look a little bit funny. They may end up cracking here, but... Two under. 14th hole par 5, 515, 263, oh wow. Alright, this is kind of what I was more expecting out of some Pete Dye course. Look at all that water. So, we're going to have to kind of stay middle left and make sure we, and that's almost, if I hit it decent, granted the last couple that I hit halfway decent were only about 255, which should, still should be short of that water, but i got to keep this pretty straight. That should be a high draw. Overcooking left, but that was kind of what I'm looking to do. That was better launch. And we got 251 out of it with trees and the rough, so that was definitely a better swing. I feel better. I think I had better movement in my shoulders there. That felt smoother. Better follow through or something. Better rotation. I don't know. Bigger shoulder turn. But we got a challenging shot here, so we're in the rough. I think we're clear of the trees, but we got 288, 215 where we're aimed, and we basically need 30 yards on that, so I gotta have a pretty well struck for hybrid to get about where we're aimed. I am gonna favor this left side, like right out there, but hopefully puts us within about 50 yards of this green. Here I can give myself a little bit of a better lie. There is a little, there's some depressions in this mat, just a little bit. Um, granted, it's essentially a perfect lie every time, but you can kind of prop it up or have it sitting down. Like there's a rubber T hole that you can put in here. So if you put it in there, the ball's kind of sitting down. And even there, sitting down a little bit versus kind of up there. It's a little bit better lie. I guess if I can pick, might as well do it. Or hybrid. Oh wow, that was way right. That might be in the water. Yep. That was horrendous. All that with the good lie talk and I go and put it in the water. That was a block slice. <laughs> that was... I was going to say it was a block, but that I blocked it right and then it sliced on top of it. Well, here goes the scorecard. And we got to do it again. So, actually maybe not. I'm going to go 4 iron. I'm going to favor this right side. If I don't hit it good, I might put it in the water again, but... That's tough on the scorecard right there. See, I don't know if you guys just saw that the ball moved. I had it kind of propped up and it moved down. There is some little bit of discrepancies here with the, the type of lies you can give yourself. Well, hit it heavy and left. It's not going to be in the water, but it's going to be short. Oh, it hurt my hand too. 
getting beat up on this round. All right. Luckily, at the par five. We're already four strokes in. We're hitting five, so we got to hold this out to save par. Inside inner circle is a bogey, I think, and then on the green is going to be a double. 27 on the dot. We're going to go 56. Let's see if we can get this close. Better strike. We'll see. Should be just shy of 30. Go! Alright. Better shot there. That's about all you can ask for. We gave it a chance. And considering we put it in the water, bogey from that, it's not too bad. Four holes left. All right, 15th hole, par four, one under. Do you guys play with the wind? I just looked at that. I haven't even considered that. There's been a couple times where I did it on accident. I forgot to turn it off. But wind would definitely bring in a whole other factor on some of these. And I would assume, knowing me, I have some questionable thoughts on some of the reads anyways. I would think with the wind, that would even exaggerate it more. But definitely would be more challenging trying to compensate with the wind on some of these. Let me know down in the comments if you guys generally on your home to hero rounds or even, I guess even GS Pro or any of those if you usually play with the wind on or off. Decent strike, a little bit healy. That's going to be kind of far left. But. I don't know if 270, 275 on the cards anymore. That was still halfway decent. It wasn't the best one in the world, but we're topping out at about 260 right now. After 18 before and 15 holes into this one. Double checking the mic's still connected. Hopefully everything works good. I don't know until I go back inside and transfer and download all the footage, but hopefully it sounds alright. 147. Um, gonna go 9. I strike it really well. Possibly see about 155 out of it, which would be a little bit long, but this should be a good full 9 iron distance. Same thing. Totally, but it was straight and it was thin gonna be pretty close to right at it may need to go a little bit because I hit it thin ball speed probably dropped but another par let's see if we can string together three more decent holes and end up with something in the red numbers one under through 15 16th hole par 3 one five six all right, nine iron, sticking with it. Gonna strike it a little bit better than that last one. Oh, that was really heavy. Go, 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 at least get in the bunker, go. Alright. Well, that was struck significantly worse than the last one, but. Alright. 23 in the bunker. A little bit more of a shadow, I guess, on the outside of this bunker. It looks pretty shallow, though, so. Maybe just over 20% which would be 4.6 I'm gonna play, I'm gonna go 56 and play it just shy of 30 should be a decent ballpark or skull it 
kind of spinning right. One extra roll that would have gone in. I think that's right next to the pin for a plus one. Can't make this up. I mean, they're not like... It's not like I'm shanking them, but that was really thin in there. They're getting lucky. Just one of those days, I guess. Two holes left. 17th hole, par 4. One under. 4 of 6. Gonna aim up this right, right there. Let's see. I'm assuming the 18th is either a par 4 or par 5. Let's see if we can get two good swings here with driver to end it. Good contact. Good smooth swing. Good shoulder turn. High draw. Start up the right. Come back left. Mm. Well, it definitely started right, and it's going to kind of stay out there. Two thirty-seven in the bunker. Yikes. Well, I definitely wouldn't put that in the good swing category, but it wasn't horrendous. Now we got a tricky shot here. 169. And we're in the bunker, so it's going to play at least 20%, which would put us at, what, 17 times 2, 34, I think? So that puts us over, what is that, like 207, 206? I'm going to go 5 iron. Usually that would be 200, 205 would be like 6, but I'm going to grab the extra club. been struggling to strike these 4, 5, and 6 longer irons decent today, so... Five iron. Spin right off the heel. That's probably just gonna stay in the bunkers. Ah. Well. Working our way closer to the hole. 42 yards. Still in the bunker. So that's going to be another at least 8, maybe even closer to 10. And we're going to go approach wedge. Play it at about 50 55. Should be about that. May need to go just a little bit. Might be short left. Yep. We're on though. I think that's going to be a bogey, unfortunately. Probably brings back to even. Let's see if we can scrape out a birdie to finish it. Oh no, though. I mean, even if I par this, or even if I get a bogey or double, anything under like five over for a course like this, especially second round of the day and the cold weather and everything else. Can't be too upset with that. So, 18th hole, par 4. We're even through 17. 441. We just got to make sure we get it up and over this. The water. Pretty cool, though. Look at the... It's almost like an island tee box. There's two tee boxes in there. Pretty cool. Bet this would be... May have to look up this hole after. 18th hole at this course. Probably pretty, pretty cool looking in real life. And no shot to be playing the tournament tip tees here in real life. So, I may... If I was playing, that could be like the white tee boxes in that middle section. That could be realistically where I would be hidden from. White or blues. Alright, a little bit thin towards the toe. It's going to be low, but it'll be fine. I had that a little more right. Garmin had that coming back left. Tough to know for sure. Obviously, you're only I'm only hitting about. I think it's right around 15 feet from right here to the front of the net. Tough to tell. Obviously, you're not seeing the full ball flight with the side spin on it. Um, that one, like I said, I had it starting right and kind of staying right. Garmin had that come back left, but that's a little bit of a second guessing thing I'm talking about. 194. 
So, well, I'd say, I don't know in real life if that actually came back and I would have been in the fairway like this or if that would have sliced right. And, uh, I don't know. You'd like to know that, obviously, just to make adjustments here, but 194. I'm going to go 6. Let's see if I can actually strike a long iron decent. A little bit better, but I caught it heavy. That's not gonna get there, I don't think. Wow, is that gonna be a plus three all the way out there? It is. Uh, that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Bogey. All right, I think that puts us to plus one for the day. So, take a look at this. Wrap this up. From John Islands Club. This was the North Course in Indian River Shores, Florida, again completed by Pete Dye in collaboration with his son Perry Dye in 1973. We ended up with a 1 over 72, so not too bad. Um, so actually this course is even playing tougher because I said at the beginning, I think the rating was like almost, it was like 73 point something, so call it 74. I was assuming it was a par 72, it was a par 71. So this is playing um, almost three strokes harder than par. Didn't seem too bad. We kind of managed our way through. The front nine was pretty good. We were two under on the front nine, three over on the back. Nine out of 14 fairways, just over 50%. We'll take that. Greens regulation, not too bad. Had some thin ones in there that we got lucky. 12 out of 18. 30 putts, pretty standard. Um, but all in all, not too bad. Definitely didn't strike the ball quite as good as I did the first round, but fatigue and the cold weather, everything else, probably playing a factor. But um, that's what I have. If you guys have any course recommendations or requests, let me know down in the comments. Um, but. Gonna wrap this one up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys at the next course.